Hello, everyone. My name is Mark Friedman. I'm a professor of neurology up at uh, the University of Ottawa in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada, as well as a senior scientist at the Ottawa Hospital Research Institute. And I'm joined today by my friend and colleague, Dr. Bianca Weinstock Gutman. Why don't you introduce yourself, Bianca? Uh, hello, Mark. I am a uh... Bianca Weinstein Gutmann, a professor of neurology at the Jacobs School of Medicine and Biomedical Sciences at State University of New York, and I'm the director also of the Jacobs MS Center for Treatment and Research from Buffalo. Well, thanks so much, Bianca. We're going to discuss today how you go about diagnosing patients with MS. So these days, people are sending us patients from all walks of life, and uh, it's really important today with a whole bunch of other things that can look like MS that we make sure that that label of MS is appropriate. We don't want to mislabel anyone for obvious reasons. So how do you go about, what's your process about um, eliminating, of course, the other things that could look like MS, which is today the first order of the McDonald criteria, which I might add are probably going to change in 2024 with the new guidelines or diagnostic guidelines that are going to come out. But nevertheless, the first order is always no better explanation. So how do you go about doing that? Okay, so we all know that for the last uh, two decades, we have the uh, McDonald criteria that included MRI benchmarks for the diagnosis of MS. And from the 2017, we including also the oligoglobins in the spinal fluid to support the diagnosis of MS. When primarily to uh, support the dissemination in space and time. The most important, though, when the seeing a patient sent to me with a possible diagnosis of MS is to try to see if they really had an event or specific demyelinating event, meaning or optic neuritis, partial transverse myelitis, or any um, brainstem event, right, with double vision, off balance, and, and so on. And that are the primary consideration when we're trying to triage where the patients are sent to us. Everyone, I think, at MS Center have a lot of patients sent, and we have to be sure that we're taking the patients that are mostly supporting a possible diagnosis of MS. MRI is very important uh, to uh, define. As we know, we have specific uh, specific characteristic of and uh, requ requirements for MRI based diagnosis with specific location, shape, and uh, to, based on the McDonald criteria. Uh, most of the patients that do not fulfill the criteria uh, are probably having uh, MRI with non-specific lesions uh, and uh, not, as we know, the specific area that location based on uh, McDonald criteria, the periventricular cortical, justacortical, infratentorial spinal cord, but many times they may present with um, non-specific white matter lesion into the um, a, uh, hemispheres, uh, very small, and may have in a, uh, superimposed comorbidities as headaches, hypertension, diabetes. However, at the same time, I think that is very important for us to be sure that, uh, and we know about the so-called radiological syndrome, uh, and uh, where we see only MRI findings, highly supporting, uh, as we see in McDonald criteria, but the patient is having the MRI uh, only for headaches or for any other um, non-specific uh, criteria is including in, in, in MS uh, or um, any um, head trauma or coming on for research uh, research uh, meetings or research uh, MRI uh, evaluations. On the same time, we have to consider that many of MS patients uh, do have more headaches than uh, the general population. So we have to keep in mind, we do have this uh, diagnosis of radiologic isolated syndrome and um, we have to monitor this patient. That is also a consideration, yes, no therapy, and this will be a probably a different discussion. Uh, and sure enough, on the differential diagnosis are the other uh, inflammatory um, diagnostic uh, as um, the newer uh, ne the neuromyelitis optica or the uh, myelin oligodemog associated disease. 
that we know they are different than uh, multiple sclerosis. They do have today a specific uh, biomarkers to help in diagnosis. And it's very important to make the differ uh, differentiation between MS because the therapies are different. So um, it's, uh, as we said, we're very pleased to have all this uh, McDonald criteria that really uh, provided a much earlier diagnosis. Therefore, we can start the treatment much earlier and that's showing to have a much more control on the disease. But in the same time, as I said, MRI can be um, not well uh, evaluated and bring on misdiagnosis. So uh, as mentioned, it's a very important to have from a clinical standpoint, the clear presentation when we make a diagnosis of a first demyelinating event. Uh, and uh, a second is to follow the specific criteria from MRI standpoint to fulfill the diagnosis. About the spinal tap, I'm sure that you, uh, Mark, you're doing a lot of spinal taps. I think in, in our clinic, if the patient is um, clearly presenting with uh, clear, clear clinical definite uh, uh, presentation, as I already mentioned, demyelinating event, and uh, with uh, MRI supporting the diagnosis, we're not going all the time to have a spinal tap. This is a more atypical presentation. We are going for a spinal tap. Okay, so I was gonna ask you about the spinal tap, but uh, it, it is ancillary information. Not only does it show the signs of disease, and now people are talking about kappa-free light changes, which is even easier to do than all the clonal bands, but I, I always say that the spinal fluid is there not so much to make a diagnosis of MS, but to rule out some of these mimics that are, are so important to eliminate from the possibility that they're causing MS and you get signs from that for the spinal fluid. If, if your patient had an optic neuritis and maybe they don't have it anymore, but they're, they've got a history, do you get the ophthalmologist involved at all? Do you do, do, you do any visual tests on I these don't. patients? We are very uh, uh, lucky, fortunate that we have a neuro-ophthalmologist with us. Often optic neuritis, actually, when their patients come in to see us, they already saw an ophthalmologist. And as you know, uh, optic neuritis patient doesn't see much and the, the physician doesn't see much. But uh, we do have a, an OCT, optical coherence tomography machine in our um, center and we're doing this. And we have also our neuro-ophthalmologist. So we do have a very specific testing for uh, evaluating, yes. Optical yeah, and especially you, you mentioned MOG and, and uh, NMO and that OCT sometimes can pick up things that uh, indicate that you're dealing with that condition versus multiple sclerosis. So uh, it's really important to bring in the other people to assist us and be absolutely sure we're dealing with MS and nothing else. Well, I, you know, I thank you for being so thorough in your discussion about diagnosis today. And uh, I want to thank all our listeners for uh, tuning in. Thanks a lot, everyone. Thank you.